Today I'm going to be going through my collection of Elvis's Gold Records Volume 2, an album that first came out in November 1959. And in this particular video I'm going to do it country by country as opposed to reverse chronological order. And at the end, as usual, I'll choose a, a copy that I would keep as a plain copy and one as a collector's item. So let's begin with the American copies that I have. And the first one I have, I believe it's actually an original from 1959. The cover has seen better days, but it's not too bad. And the reason why I say I think it's an original from 1959 is because of the wording on the labels. It says Camden NJ on the labels, which I believe makes it the first pressing. And it's got one or two marks on it, but it sounds really, really good. This was an album that I picked up as part of a set that I bought in Japan. This next American copy I have is from 1968, I believe, one of the first orange label ones. And I also picked this one up here in Japan. The cover is slightly different in that everything has been shifted down in order to accommodate the RCA and uh, Victor logos. But they also did that with the early 60s releases as well. And it has its original company in a sleeve, which, like most of them, has got splits in the sides. And that's the record there, rigid vinyl with the grooves near the outside of the labels. Very nice copy. And the last American pressing I have is a more recent copy from 2014, it says on the cover. This is a Friday Music edition with the gatefold cover. As I've said before, I have mixed feelings about these gatefold covers. But the printing quality on the front and on the back actually is very, very good. Probably in some of the images, it's actually even better than on the first edition. Some of the uh, small photos of Elvis, for example, his face is very clear. Funnily enough, the largest pictures are the most blurred, but it certainly stands up to the original American cover in terms of printing quality. I don't think this one was remastered from analog tapes because it doesn't say so on the back cover. It just says remastered. There is the label, looking very similar to the old black labels. The next one I have is one I've shown in a previous video, so I'll just show it again very briefly. This is a copy from El Salvador, and it looks like they've just photocopied the front and back covers of an American copy from 1977 and added a little Spanish text down here, which identifies it as being from El Salvador. The labels too, it's basically a 1977 American label with a bit of Spanish text at the bottom. So it looks very cheap, but it sounds fine, although it is in stereo. The first Japanese copy I have is actually the earliest Japanese copy of the album, and this came out in October 1962. So the album was never released in Japan in the 1950s. There is a good reason for that, and I'll do a separate video on that because it's quite an interesting story. So the stereo version came out first, there's the label, which shows that by that point, late 1962, stereo records were certainly outselling mono. Mono record came out in the following year, 1963, and the cover is virtually identical. This one is actually much more difficult to find than the stereo copy. And the label design is slightly different on the mono labels. Now the next Japanese copy I have is probably the rarest album uh, of all these that I'm showing today. And this is a 1969 copy from Japan on the RCA label. So this was the first RCA pressing of this album in Japan. And by that point, of course, the labels were orange. Very hard to find that copy. And the cover is also very nice as well. It's hard to find these 
thin old covers in such nice condition. So that one was available from between 1969 and uh, 72. And then in 72, they actually reissued it in this gatefold sleeve. Believe it or not, this is Gold Records Volume 2. And they actually re-released all four volumes of the Gold Records, Golden Records series in these gatefold sleeves. And uh, I did a video on that series. That was a long time ago now, actually. And the still, those records are all in stereo, including this one. And they continued releasing it in stereo right until 1985, when the album was released in mono again, as part of the 50th anniversary series. I don't have a copy of that because it's quite difficult to find a clean cover. The album itself is not that difficult to find, but it's difficult to find one with a clean cover. But I do have a nice copy of the last Japanese vinyl edition, which is this 1992 pressing here. So I've done a whole video about this particular series, so uh, I won't say too much about it here. Although once again, the printing on the front cover leaves a bit to be desired. It's not as good as the Friday music or the American originals. But it does have a nice picture label. And it sounds really good. There's no information on this series in the liner notes or anywhere else about the sources of the music. It doesn't say whether they're remastered or not. But in any case, they all sound really good. Even if the covers are not as good as the American versions. And finally, I've got a few UK copies to show. This is an original from, what would it have been, 1960 in the UK. And the sleeve is fully laminated and it's got these little cutaways at the top there. Still got the old inner sleeve, which is always good to see. And this is a really, really nice copy. It looks like it was hardly ever played. I have another copy from about 1963. This one's seen better days, but this was part of a set of records that I bought. So I just hung on to it. And it has this small silver spot label. And uh, it's, it's got quite a few marks on it, but it still sounds really good. They really did make good records back then. And the UK version actually has 14 songs. So the four songs at the bottom of the list there, Loving You, Teddy Bear, Jill Hash Rock and Treat Me Nice. They were left off the original UK pressings of Golden Records and replaced by four other songs that had not been released at the time. Um, but I've got some copies of that album to show in uh, another video. For some reason, this 1964, 64, 5 pressing um, doesn't have a laminated cover on the back. So this is the red spot edition. I bought this from a seller in the UK along with about five other Red Spot albums. And they were the first albums I bought when I decided to get back into collecting records again. That was about 15 years ago. And I have another copy of this album. These are all mono pressings, by the way. And this one, it's back to the fully laminated sleeve. And this one is actually on the orange label and it's still in mono. I think this one dates from about 1970. So that album was released in mono all the way through until 1970 in the UK. And then they reissued it in this rather striking sleeve. And just like the Japanese, they also got quite a lot of mileage out of the 1968 TV special on the record covers, as you can see here. So this was the first stereo edition in the UK, still with the same 14 songs. And this one is on this orange RCA Victor label. And I have another copy of this album. And the reason why I bought this one is because the cover is actually fully laminated. The First one I showed, the back cover is not laminated. So I couldn't resist this one, fully laminated.
So as for a plain copy and a collector's copy, for the plain copy, I would definitely choose my American copy, the original that I have from 1959. That one, it does have one or two minor marks on it, but it sounds absolutely superb. So I can play it without really worrying too much about scratching it up. And as for a collector's copy, I'd probably choose this 1960 UK copy. Uh, the covers got a bit yellowed over the years, but the record is pretty much as new. I originally bought Gold Records Volume 2 when I was about 14 or 15 years old. And at the time, I had nine of the ten songs on singles or other LPs. So you can probably imagine my disappointment when I finally got to hear My Wish Came True. It's the only Duff song on the album, as far as I'm concerned. But what about you? Do you have any nice copies of this album? And what do you think of it? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Cheers.